Hi guys, Rose here with the Cackling Moon. Welcome to my meditation corner. This is where I meditate when I want to meditate in my um, story time, story time, what the fuck? <laughs> in my um, Cackling Moon tarot room, the moon, the crystal shop, whatever I call it. I always call it like different things. Um, story time room. <laughs> Welcome to story time, you guys. Okay. <laughs> I'm doing a horizontal video because I had so many people say they wanted to see horizontal. I don't know why. Like, I just, I don't think it really matters, but here you go. Happy. <laughs> I will be looking over here because I want to look at myself, but then when I look at myself, I'm looking this way. Sorry. Um, but that's just the habit. I'm used to seeing myself when I'm talking. It makes me feel less nervous and weird um, but I'll try to look over here to remember that that's where the little recording thing is so anyways we're gonna talk about how did I become a tarot reader how did I get started what happened people want to know so that was one of the requests um, when I put up a live I was asking you guys what do you guys want to see video content wise and that was like one of the first requests so because it was one of the first requests I'm going to honor it today so, um, back in 2012, <laughs> 2012, I, um, went into therapy. I was in therapy for six months, um, and it was the most amazing experience. Some people have p opinions about therapy and, um, I found it to be extremely helpful, extremely beneficial, extremely healing, um, it was a beautiful experience. I wish I could have stuck with it a little bit longer, but it became a bit too expensive. So um, I'm not going to get into why I got into therapy, but basically I, I'm i glad I did it. And it had been something that I had been wanting to do for years and years and years since I was like 14 years old um, because a lot of shit went down when I was younger. And I didn't, wouldn't do it because I always thought it was going to be super expensive or I <laughs> was afraid to ask for help. Um, and you know, when you're like a teenager and you are feeling a bunch of things and you're going through stuff that your parents don't even know half of it, it's kind of scary, right? So anyways, <clears throat> when I finally seeked out therapy, I was already in my mid twenties. Um, and I was already, you know, pretty much on the brink of a awakening of a spiritual awakening i was seeing 11 11 everywhere it, there was just a lot of things going on that i didn't really understand at the time because i wasn't involved spiritually in that stuff yet but i <laughs> now that i look back on it, it it makes sense it's like wow that's why i was going through all that so um my therapist wanted me to Okay, so because in therapy I was talking about everybody else, <laughs> my therapist wanted me to focus more so on me. And she wanted me to start really discovering me, who I am, what are my interests, what are my passions, you know, what are the things in life that make me happy. I never really asked myself those questions. Um, I was always living my life based on what other people or what I thought were expectations of me by other people. And that's a typical Pisces trait. We're always wanting to help everyone else out, but we never really help ourselves. Like we will crumble and we will fall apart, but we will damn sure make sure that everyone else is okay. So <laughs> that's kind of like been the theme of my life forever. And even still to this day, like I still have the tendencies to do that. But, um, so it was really hard. It was really weird to ask myself, what are my interests? You know, what are the things that I want to discover in life? Um, and so in therapy, I was like doing a lot of purging of, you know, memories or um, events, situations, people. And, <laughs> and one of the biggest things was I felt like I didn't know who, who I was or what I wanted in life. I was crying. I just remember crying in every session. And I just felt so confused and so lost. Um, and I did not identify with any of the paths that any of my family members took. I didn't identify with being, you know, a part of the church. I didn't identify with being, 
you know, a born again Christian, like <laughs> that just wasn't me, right? It just wasn't me. And so um, I remember one night I was questioning what I wanted to do. And at the time I was really into makeup. I was really into watching the beauty vlogs and like makeup tutorial tutorials on YouTube. Like that was my big thing that was kind of like an outlet. And I was watching a YouTube video and then all of a sudden like, you know how sometimes YouTube will show you recommendation like videos that you should watch, you might be interested in or whatever. <laughs> so there was one up by the Four Queens or Callianne Maddox, right? And it was about tarot and it was like the most random video because I was just, I wasn't searching tarot, I wasn't into spirituality, I wasn't looking up anything like with that topic. And here was her video. So I remember clicking on it because I was so intrigued by just her face, just the way she looked. Um, Callie Maddox has a very distinct look to her. At the time in her videos, her hair was black. She had like this very strict, like the very straight bangs, thick black um, frame glasses. She just looked like somebody I wanted to hang out with. Black hair, black frame glasses. Like I was like, no, okay. I can I can do this let's see so I remember I watched her video and it was tarot related and and I was just so intrigued I was so like what is this <laughs> so um she talked about a tarot training course and it was like this this like I don't even know how many videos are in this series but it's a series where you you know she talks about tarot and you're pretty much learning so in her video she was always using this deck and i just remember it having like the blue backs and i didn't know anything about tarot and i googled it and i saw that amazon was selling the decks and i didn't even know that i bought a used copy i just bought the cheapest one i could find and i remember <laughs> i remember when i ordered the deck i was so afraid of having it shipped to my parents house because um i didn't want them to know what i was buying like I'm telling you, I come from a very strict, conservative family. And so anything like this would be a no-no. <laughs> and even in my mid-20s, because I was in my mid-20s when this happened, I was afraid to have something like this shipped. So I was very, very, very nervous, but I knew I wanted to do it. So I bought a deck. I bought this deck, and it was $10. It was a used copy um, on Amazon. It, it didn't come with the guidebook or anything it was just the deck of cards in the box I don't I think I threw the box away it was my very first tarot deck <laughs> and I remember when I got the cards you know I was going through them to make sure that they were the ones that Kelly was using Kellyanne was using and I remember like I was like okay has these images okay this must be the same deck <laughs> and then I did her tarot training course so I was watching the videos I had like a notebook and I was taking my notes and stuff and I was learning tarot through her videos and then I remember I bought the 78 degrees of wisdom so over there on my bookshelf I have all of my like tarot books and stuff so it's way over there that was the um that was the book that I studied with and I remember I was um when I was working I was like on my lunch breaks or my 15 minute breaks and I had the book with me and I was highlighting everything like I'm a highlighter I'm a I'm a notes kind of a person, so that's the way I study. Um, and I read the entire book, I studied the cards, I played with them. At the time I had a Tumblr account, which was, I used to just like post a lot of horror stuff in my Tumblr account, so it was like a lot of horror movies or like pictures of horror stuff, um, true crime, like all of that. And I slowly started to like be more into the tarot stuff and the meditation and the um, psychic things. Like I remember my, my tastes were starting to change. I was getting more into like that whole metaphysical world. And um, I started offering free readings in the tarot, the tarot community. So if you like tagged your post, it would pop up. And so tarot community was like one of the, the tags for tarot. And I remember I started offering free readings. So I was doing freebies. I changed my username. Um, at the time, I changed it to Luna Hour. That was the name that I went by for about a year. Um, I built like a following on Tumblr. I think I had about maybe like 
three, four thousand followers on Tumblr. It just, it was so organic. It was so, it just started happening. It was, it, I didn't have to think about it. It just, <laughs> it just flowed. Like, that's how you know, like something that is meant to be just flows, right? And so later on, I changed from Luna Hour, I changed my name to The Cackling Moon, and then that's when I created a YouTube channel. And this YouTube channel was created in 2014. So from 2012 to 2014, which is two years, I was studying the tarot, I was doing a lot of free readings on Tumblr, I was building my following. So by that time, I think I had about five or 6,000 followers. Um, and then I, um, I was getting so many requests for free readings and I was receiving so much positive feedback that I started to dabble with the idea of charging for my readings. Now, there's different communities out there with tarot and, um, Tumblr so much is, is pretty much dying off now, <laughs> but at the time Tumblr was pretty big for the tarot community. Um, and a lot of the readers on Tumblr, we, we were, we would, you would see people charging like a dollar readings or $5. I think $10 was like the most that you would see someone come up with. And, um, I wanted to be a part of that world. And then at the same time, I was also following Callie Maddox. I was following Ethany and, um, you know, just uh, Carrie Mallon. There was like different tarot readers, like bigger tarot readers that I was looking at their content and, um, I was like, I want to do that. I want to do this. <laughs> so I remember it was like a big deal when I decided I'm going to start charging like a dollar to $5 readings. Um, and so I remember I started doing that and I created an Etsy shop. The first thing was that I was an Etsy shop and I was on Etsy for a couple months. I still have the Etsy account, but I since closed the shop because I didn't really care too much for the way that it just, I didn't like it. I don't know. I don't know. I just didn't like it. Um, but I went from Etsy to store envy and I had store envy from 2014 through to now I still have it, but I don't really, I don't use it as much anymore. I'm trying to like utilize my website more so. And so, um, I remember like the first readings that I was selling were anywhere from a dollar to five dollars and then it would move up to like ten dollars and then it would move up to more and so it that's just how I started I progressed that way um, a lot of people ask me like how do you know when you're ready to start charging for your readings you you will know because you will be have you you will feel comfortable doing it you won't second guess but you will also um, you will be receiving so many positive, like so much positive feedback from the people that you are reading for on a free basis um, <clears throat> that you'll just feel like, wow, I'm doing so well. <laughs> I'm so accurate. I'm so, you know, on point. Why not? You know, you'll just kind of start to feel yourself naturally um, shifting. Sorry, I got to I got to stretch out my feet. My legs, my foot's falling asleep. <laughs> um, and so that's what was happening. I was just kind of like, you know what? I think now it's time. Like so many people are telling me how, how much they like my readings and um, why not? You know, I want to do this. So it's a big decision. It is because when you go from doing freebies, like freebies are, there's, there's, there's ex an expectation there to be professional, but you're not taking someone's money, you know, so it's not as scary. But when you start taking someone's money and you're providing a service for that, um, you need to make sure you're ready for that. You need to make sure that you are, um, you're going to be professional about it and you're going to be organized and you're going to have a plan and you're going to have, you know, a routine and, and you're going to be will ready to do your turnarounds on time and, you know, you just got to be ready for it. So if you feel doubtful about it or you feel like, oh, I don't know, I can't then I would say hold off until you know for a fact that you're ready to do it because other than that, you're just it's just going to be more stress for you. <laughs> um, it should just be a very organic process. It should just be natural. Um, so that's basically like, that's like in a nutshell what happened. Um, it literally just, I always like to say like Kellyanne Maddox's video came out of thin air. I wasn't searching tarot. It just happened. It was so weird. Um, 
I stopped watching like the the beauty channels and the the clothing channels you know those like those haul videos and stuff I was not interested in that stuff anymore it was all about tarot it was so all about tarot I was so obsessed and it was a good obsessed because it was like I finally found something that I enjoy doing uh, that I understood and that I just didn't lose interest in and that's a big one like when you're following a path that is meant for you nine times out of ten you're not gonna fall out of love with it it's just something that happens and you feel so called to do it and that's what happened um <laughs> so that's like it's not like a it's not a super exciting story to tell it's just I was in therapy and I started to want to discover things about me and then all of a sudden this video pops up and I look at it and then I buy a deck for 10 bucks on Amazon and I start learning the cards and boom 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 like next thing I know two years later I'm selling my first reading and then now I'm like selling readings all the time and you know it's just it's beautiful <laughs> it's beautiful and the growth like I keep my I keep my journals I don't know how oh, it's way over there I keep my books um actually no I don't want to show it because it has people's my clients information in it but I have like my appointment books um from 2014 through to now to the present so I have like I could see the progress I could see like how much I was charging for my first few readings which I, I'm telling you they were like a dollar five dollars I remember how big it felt to charge ten dollars for a reading I remember my twenty dollar reading felt like how <laughs> how it is now when I put up like a hundred dollar reading I mean <laughs> it's just it's so funny to me how one little fear of you know taking someone's money and providing a service can turn into something that's so natural now like I don't even I don't even worry about that stuff anymore and that's like a big thing I wanted to tell you guys is um if you're starting your own little shop and selling things whether it's readings or it's like creations that you make when you're first doing it it's scary right it's it's it feels scary yes because you're taking someone's money and you're providing a service and you want to make sure that they're gonna like it um, but after you've done that so many times it doesn't phase you anymore like taking someone's money feels natural because the service you provide is worth it and that's another thing I think is a big um, point to make is that if you would pay for your own services then you know what you have is good and that that's like probably that's probably also another way to gauge like how you're gonna you know charge for your readings and all that kind of stuff like go based on what you, what you would pay for your own services you know what I mean and that says a lot, you know, it, it does. It says a lot about your services. So <laughs> that's how I got into tarot. That's how I became a tarot reader. It just sort of happened. I know nothing about doing my own business. I don't, I know nothing about, I just, I just did it. I literally just did it. Um, and I have, and I still have, I had, and I still have, <laughs> you know friends that I've made in this tarot community and I've met a lot of readers and amazing people and you know you just kind of we all just kind of help each other and then you learn on the way and it's trial and error when one thing works and something doesn't you learn from it you have to make mistakes because you will learn from your mistakes um, not every transaction is going to be a positive one. Not every feedback is going to be a positive one. And that's just part of the path. That's part of the journey. Um, but I love it. And I know for myself, this is what I wanted to do. And I have been quite successful in seeing the progression of the cackling moon from 2014 to now. You know, I'm on year five. So I must be doing something right. <laughs> And you know, and it's it's a nice little progression, and I hope and I can I hope I continue to see progress with this, you know. So being a tarot reader has just been super healing and super 
um, eye-opening and the path is amazing and I don't regret it at all. <laughs> so um, that's basically the story that I have to tell about how I became a tarot reader. Um, thank you guys. Thank you so much for all of your input, your comments, your love, your your feedback, um, your support. <laughs> but um, if you want to see anything else or you have any other questions, leave some comments below. I'll do my best to answer. Um, but if you have any other like requests for videos and whatnot, go ahead and leave them um, in the drop down, like l l leave me a comment or you can send me an email. All of that information is in the description box and I will see what happens next. So until then, my loves, I will talk to you later. Sending you all my love. Thank you for tuning in and we will talk soon. Bye loves.